Now, if the last two weeks have taught us anything, it's that the left is obsessed with teaching children about sexual and gender identity. In private schools, it's dubbed a queer inclusive curriculum. It's being secretly rolled out without parents' knowledge by the National Association of Independent Schools. Now, here's part of a workshop that's just now coming to light. They start them real young. With the younger children starting in pre-K, we talk about their bodies, about the parts that they were born with, um, about penises and vaginas and whether that makes somebody a boy or a girl, but also their feelings. What do they feel like inside? Do they feel like a boy or a girl? What does their head say? Does their head and their heart and their body match up? How dare they? Well, what on earth? Thanks to Breitbart, by the way, for publishing this. Now, this isn't going to go over well. Remember what happened when moms and dads across America, by the way, of both political persuasions, saw what happened in Florida, where Disney opposed Governor DeSantis's parental rights and education bill. The law that Disney finds so horrifying merely prohibits sexually explicit instruction for five to eight-year-olds, including stuff like this. Second grade, we move on explicitly to gender identity and talk about it again in terms of your head and your heart and your body parts matching up. And does that work for you? What happens if it doesn't? And the kids draw wonderful self-portraits again, um, but dealing with all aspects of their identity, including specifically their gender identity. Now, gone are the days when they're just teaching about human reproduction. Now, by fifth grade, they're taught about sexual expression and more on identity. Gender expression is what you share with the world. It's something that you can change from day to day. It's completely up to you. Sexual orientation is who you are emotionally and physically attracted to. We talk about gender identity specifically with the gender unicorn, this time talking about things as a continuum. The gender unicorn. Now, by the time the kids get into middle school, they're then bombarded by efforts to undo any semblance of traditional values that their parents might have taught them. Teachers and administrators, often with very fun personalities, by the way, are eager to share their own experiences with sexual and gender identity, like this assistant principal in Burlington, Vermont. Students call me AP Ellis, uh, since I don't use gendered pronouns uh, in my name. Uh, I personally identify both as gender nonconforming and gender non-binary in that I do not feel just female or male, but I feel uh, a mix of, of that within myself. Uh, then this complaint about misgendering. As a trans person, it does get really tiresome in conversations where I'm being misgendered and I'm carrying the discomfort of another adult for their mistake um, and, and sort of have to take the burden of the discomfort of that. Uh, and again, I think kids do a really miraculous job of not doing that. Okay, I got it. Children who don't misgender are miraculous because they haven't been ruined by their more traditional parents. I understand. Now remember, these schools are educating the next generation of educators. Got to get them on board. Got to get them on message. I'm going to open the door for our student panelists to weigh in here. I feel respected with my gender, but I definitely think that we should talk about it more outside and like more throughout different classes during the day. I'm in middle school and I have a younger sibling in fourth grade and... Not 100% sure what their pronouns are. Wow. Why are these people so invested in pushing these concepts on children of any age? Now, they seem to forget that parents pay the salaries of these teachers and the school board members. And now it's up to parents to get informed and speak up. Some already are. Families across America are swearing off Disney. They seem to think are pleasing everyone, when if they actually spoke to the people in the park, they'd find out they're not. It is the parents' jobs to teach their children on the society of the norms and of the, and of the norms of their household. I think they need to stay out of politics. But Mouseland isn't backing down. They're more afraid of offending radical activists than they are the families 
who buy those really, really expensive park hopper passes. Oh, that's fine. We're going to see how that all works out for Disney. Marketing sneakers or those goofy mouse ears to kids, that's one thing. But marketing complicated topics of sexuality and gender, that's grooming. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Joy Reid doesn't like that language. Sorry. Conservative political operatives have figured out what riles up their base, the fake threat that progressives are trying to indoctrinate their children, to groom them to become gay or trans. These terms, indoctrination, grooming, predator, accusing innocent people of being pedophiles or being soft on pedophiles, it is all so a very specific trigger for a group that is sinking its teeth into our political discourse. Mixed metaphors aside, whatever term you want to use to describe what they're doing, it's having a dramatic effect on our young people. How else do you explain that today 20% of Gen Z identifies as LGBTQ+, which is double that of millennials, five times more than Gen X, and 10 times those who identify as such among the baby boomers? They're boring. Well, we all know what influence peddling looks like in the political context, right? We see it. We know it. It's why China paid Hunter Biden all that money and why the Clinton Foundation got all those big contributions from places like Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Well, what's happening in our schools is sexual influence peddling. And if you want to protect your kids, you have to get up to speed on what your kids are being subjected to at school. As a preschool teacher, a drag king, and as a member of the LGBTQ community, how do I feel about the new legislations for like the Don't Say Gay Bill? I don't care what the government tells me to do. I am going to do what I think is best for the health and safety of my kids. Well, first, we love all people. Whatever you believe, whatever you are, we love all of humankind. But I will say this. The left has gotten itself so tangled up with some of the more radical, confused elements in society that they are now offering absurdly contorted defenses of all this. Adopting the slogan, Save the children, which of course sounds perfectly noble, innocent enough on its face, but as Associate Press reports, has actually become a dog whistle to QAnon supporters. This is QAnon all the way down. Republicans are repurposing old smears to taint Democrats as part of a shadowy cabal of child sex abusers. What is he talking about? No one's saying any. I don't know anyone is saying any of that. What we are saying is that children should go to school to learn how to read and write to learn math and science and wonderful history. And we are saying that their innocence is worth protecting. Marinating our kids in lessons on gender inclusivity and sexual expression, it's not going to help them succeed in this ever-competitive world we live in. And it goes without saying that everyone, and I mean everyone, should feel safe in school. Bullying should never be tolerated. But the bullies today are often those who refuse to respect parental boundaries those who seek to destroy a kid's innocence in the name of tolerance. Parents we've spoken with have had enough, and they're mobilizing. And to help them, we have created the Ingram Angle Parent Portal. It's a place for you to share what your children are seeing and hearing in the classroom. We'll hear the good and the not so good. Email us at ingramangle at fox.com. Send us examples of some of the lessons that your kids are learning or seeing or hearing, and be sure to include the school district, the city, and the state, and keep all comments respectful. Tolerance demands that the dignity of all people be respected, including the dignity and innocence of our children. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.